So anyway, where, where should we dig in on uh, the craziness of this song that uh, apparently Brick hasn't heard? Well, I'll say this. Crazy. So, so Rick Ross responded in less than three hours right. to me. With a song? With a diss track. And that shit was already there. Of course. Of course, he might have made a few little alterations. No, like, academics like, said that it was written after the song came out, which if you listen to like a classic Rick Ross song, I mean, they're not terribly intricate. I could imagine. He's got some, he's got some, he's got some wordplay. He's mm. got some bar work. From a technical perspective, Rouse is kind of been right. nice, to like be honest with five you. Five years and, into his career, he started having. Well, stuff. yeah, you feel me? Like, when he first came out, he was. Am I a narcissist mm. just because I wake up to a bowl of lobster bisque? You feel me? Like, he be saying some fire but shit. Keep in mind, but, Rick Ross came into the game during like the cocaine era of GZ and, and, sure. and everybody just basically like talking about the cool thing at the time, might be hard to believe, was to talk about Coke rap. your cocaine selling, your drug yeah. selling in the simplest possible terms. Sure. Like a normal chorus was, I sell cocaine. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, every et cetera. Day et cetera. Day, yeah, every exactly. Day you know, that was just how rap was for a while. And it was, and people forget, but it was a time in which like lyrical rappers were what? very much aggrieved about the state of affairs, which is usually almost always going to be the case. Well, but then you had, you, you had Pusha T doing it. You, there was lyrical coke rap. True, Even like true. Ghostface was big on like a, the, the coke rap. Remember mm. that? Like, Kilo is a thousand yeah. grams. Like, so like the, there is lyrical coke rap at that time. And too. Rick Ross but, came out during all that. Yeah. And he I, did, it, and I'll say this, he is lyrical. Literally one of the best diss track makers in the game right now. Like th that, uh, when idols become rivals, joint to Birdman yeah. is one of the most scathing diss tracks yeah. mm -hmm. in hip hop history. Like literally. So like, Ross really got it. And him entering the chat right here is a huge dub. Like, but Rick Ross, I, I believed Rick Ross be all the way up until he went on tour with Lil Wayne. What tour was that with the cool kids? Nick yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's early. Yeah, yeah, cause yeah, I yeah. just I left from there to go get the bullet. The bullet uh, pulled out my neck. The bullet was still lodging my neck. Something about that fucking concert made it pop all the way out. I don't know what it was. <laughs> what but it, when I let, when I went, it, it was, was the right badge. Here. The badge the was magnetic. Out, this is why we need you on this podcast. Yeah, this random I bullet out, removal stories. Yeah, but no, because I believed him. Well, I'm going into what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. I believed him until I seen him perform. Mm. And I'm like, this dude is a great actor. Yeah. But it sounds He's cool, a though, great right? great actor. Yeah, it sounds cool. Like, no, I gave What it about to his him. performance made you feel that way? Oh. He didn't sell no dope with all that old theatrical ass shit. Over it was there. too performance. It was too performance. Like nigga, you not no dope boy. We don't know how to do that but shit. Soft. Dude. What crack through yonder window sells? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll speak out on, on behalf of the boss who I met approximately Bounce. two weeks ago for the first yeah. time, and I, I don't want to disrespect him or Big oh, no, Duck I'm not. I'm in a fan way. though. But okay, I feel like maybe Rick Ross is the guy who sold drugs. But also just happened to be a little too smart for what he was doing, had a little bit too much of a gift for words, was a little bit too business savvy. Well, so he was able to take his cocaine tales and turn it into a lucrative music career as opposed to like a shitty art of dialogue interview down the road 20 years, you know? So his fat ass was pulling up to the docks. I'm not saying like, no. Copy. I'm no, just saying clearly, I don't think yeah. him like being so eloquent is it, necessarily a sign that he it, didn't do yeah, it, right? You don't have to be a gangster to sell drugs, but... King Von was, was a killer. Look how good with words and rapping he was. But you could tell. But, but I said tell. He, bu yeah. he King Von bucks the stereotype of... Every killer is the motherfucker in the shiesty who's totally quiet in the corner and ain't gonna do shit, but it'll catch a body, right? Yeah. He fucks the stereotype. That's why he was yeah. so fucking huge. I mean, because that's what the mainstream thinks. Like, it's a lot of cocky killers in the hood. Especially Chicago. It's a lot of people also forget that go knock something down and dare you to play with them <laughs> and brag about their last work every time you say something. Like, it's some wild mouth, fat mouth niggas in the hood. That's mm -hmm. how they end up in jail. The person that tells me, <laughs> Nine times out of ten wasn't in a car with you. Mm. He got caught with a gun and some dope up his ass and was like, man, I heard this conversation. Add a crease to your cranium. Chicago <laughs> notoriously is one of the worst places for keeping that shit quiet because you, you'll forever hear about, like, people come in here, they, they don't know that we know everything off camera. People tell us who killed who and shit. Yeah, for sure. There, yeah. There's Reddit forums Time dedicated to it and all that. Every like, time we get drunk together, you tell me something you're not supposed to tell me. <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus but do, you, Christ, do you all remember? Not like that. No, well, I, well, it we'll is kind of. It's kind of here and there. It does get, our, our brotherhood gets to. Hey. He forgets I'm not really. Yeah. Six out. 
Nah, but he, I, I, shit, them niggas will tell me for you. Will. So hey, but do y'all, do y'all remember Rick Ross prior to the that incarnation of him being the dope dealer when he was signed to Suave House Records years before that? No. Remember Tony Draper's label, Suave House, which was like, <laughs> I think that's where like eight ball and MJG came See, out. This is why we need Lush on the podcast because he was paying attention to Rick Ross before hustling, and he rapped completely differently. Like he had a more like I seen the shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. Seen it. Yeah, he had a that more like. That was like, yeah, it wasn't even the dope boy. It was like Trick thing. Daddy type yeah, shit. Yeah, like, yeah, he was on that. Player that, like yeah, shit. Yeah, I forget yeah. what the Miami bop music is called. But okay, on right. as long as we're doing the Rick Ross clip, which is what this would appear to be, 1090 Jake is threatening to basically make a video about Rick Ross, and I'm not sure if it's entirely just because he's offended by Rick Ross calling Drake a white boy, but... He claims that he has evidence that Rick Ross was a correctional officer for upwards of two years where Rick Ross claims it was four months. There's a clip from a Noke Boys interview where he says it was four months. I really don't think that that, I mean, that's cool. I feel like Chelsea we've all Jake. kind of like, like we, realized we, we, we don't know. really give a shit about that with Rick Ross we anymore, right? Like, yeah. like I made the joke earlier, like what pulled the bullet out of your neck was the fucking badge on Rick Ross's correctional. Yeah, you yeah, feel yeah me? that's like, what I'm saying. We know what time it is. But that's what made me say he's playing like, you was probably like somebody's dope mule inside the pen or something like that might be. He should have rapped about that. that. He should. Yeah. Somebody getting all that shit in yeah, there. Somebody could have got there. You, you could have said, yeah, I was a CO, but I was playing street shit the whole time. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's where I made all my money at. Do you think that Rick Ross could like talk about hooping drugs and like make it sound cool on a song <laughs> I don't think they have to put him in their body to he, get him in bro. That, that fool can hide it under his tits what do you mean put it, bro, put like, it in a no uh, love you Ross I, I can't Legend. tell her. I mean but what if you had a burrito when you came to work yeah Fent burrito a couple balloons in there Shit, I might get hungry to eat it. Oh, a Federito yeah. sounds delicious. Uh, I hate <laughs> but I'm just saying, a burrito, a burrito. I'm just using that. Just say you come with a packaged lunch to work. Yeah. They're not going through that. Mm. That's so smart. What, yeah, I'm I mean, sure he's heard of all that and other things. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, when he said, I know Noriega, the real Noriega, and he owes me favors. Maybe he was referring because he used to <laughs> bring <you> dope on his <laughs> tear. <laughs> Come down his tear like, look, man, I just slid Nori some shit. You know what yeah, he, he owes me a hundred favors. He owes me, he owes me three cartons of cools. Like, <laughs> but I mean, I'm looking forward to that 1090 video if that actually does happen. Yeah, just be because you've never seen 1090 take on a target that big, right? Yeah. He'll talk about finesse two times. He'll talk about Greedo. He ain't talking about year. the greatest of all time. Like, you know, he, top rappers of our time, right? Florida, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't play by yeah. Florida. Yeah. yeah, yeah, You don't that's play fact. by Florida. I don't like, understand the Florida politics. No, 1090 but. don't play about Florida. He, that's his He's staple, Florida like, by way yeah. of Boston. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, as far as, like, Rick Ross, he knows that he could get in his business just a little bit more due to the Florida connects. Mm. Like he probably could take on Rick Ross first as a big guy because, hey, you from Miami, I could prove that you not a gangster, never was a gangster, that one bit. And you called him Drake a white boy, acting like he's soft when y'all just as soft as each other. But but it, it's, like, fun, you know it's funny saying? though. You got Aubrey and you got the CO. You brought mm. up you you brought up earlier like at a certain point you were when we were talking about Vlad, you were like. Vlad used to be in the trenches with us. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Do you remember what transpired between him and Rick Ross and uh, that whole situation? Like, well, let me tell you this: when you when you do content with Vlad, there's one thing you don't want to talk about. Is that okay? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that was just yeah. like, and, like, and that's no, that's not a diss to Vlad, but obviously, do your like, Googles if you want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Th that that whole that switch, like he moved very differently after that. Uh, mm, that I is do true. My homework. Because Vlad tells me stories sometimes about being at parties and shit back in the day, and I'm like, I don't see you at a ton of parties now. I feel like that was kind of like a moment where he decided I'm gonna move a lot different. I can't, I can't be taking risks. Vlad like came to my yeah. battle event. Vlad watched fucking Cassidy battle disaster. You feel me? Like mm. we're smoking weed and everything. Vlad, look, I got a lot of love for Vlad because he did an interview with me. I, I, I did a couple interviews with him, right? Mm. Like or on his platform, and he did an interview with me talking about a situation I had at the time, like a beef with somebody. And a pair, and I was like zannied out my fucking door. Uh, you feel uh, me? Uh, like, and I'm just running my mouth saying so much crazy shit that was like for show incriminating as fuck. Uh, and what? And Vlad was like, hey, he 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 actually 
would have got some decent traction and views off of it because it was heavily discussed at the time. Mm. But he's like, I'm not putting this shit out. Mm. Like, I'm not going to do you like that. Like, this is a bad look. You're like, so, fuck it, put it out. Yeah, exactly. I, I, was, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. But, but he for sure did the right thing. Yeah. And, like, that showed me that Vlad really do have a moral compass regardless of what people have to say. So I've always fucked with Vlad from that. Vlad know? is probably one of the most smeared unfairly people. He's a good dude. Rap. The vast majority of people that don't like Vlad, I'm going to be honest with you, it doesn't have anything to do with anything besides the fact that they just don't vibe with him. Because it's yeah. like, to be cool with Vlad is to understand that he is, he's a very like orderly sort of neurotic dude. Like he's very organized. Even like when you do an interview with him, it's very, very structured. Even when you're having a conversation with him, he's a, he's a pretty straight laced guy. It's not yeah. like kicking it with Nori where he's yeah. cracking the craziest fucking jokes you ever heard the whole time or whatever. Yeah, and and I feel time. like yeah. that, that plus the white thing is way more of why people give Vlad hate. Because think about like the thing that they hated Vlad for originally, which was basically like doing interviews that pried into the person's, you know, Being criminal fed. past and then titling it accurately, that is no longer a valid criticism because everybody in hip hop does that. But still, right. a lot of people have this fucking grudge against Vlad. And I, I feel like it's largely personality based. I would kind of say a lot of the same for me. A lot right. of people, like, if, if they don't like No Jumper, a lot of it is that they just don't fuck with the white boys making gay jokes and doesn't worship God and et cetera, et cetera, you know? And but, don't but, believe but that's, y'all should be in our business. Exactly. But th yeah. That's the like, thing, though. Like, they Vlad, want, Vlad. They want white people to buy their album, but you can't critique it. Mm. Well, well, that's the thing. <laughs> that's crazy. Vlad that's right. grew up in Berkeley, California, which is right next to Oakland and is like an active know, city itself. You feel me? Yeah. Shout out Berkeley. Berkeley. I live in Emeryville. Shouts to B Town. You feel me? Shouts to all that shit. Shouts to Emeryville. That's like North Oakland, basically. You yeah. feel me? And, and he was, that fool was in a Cypress Hill video in like 1992, really? 93. Like he's in the crowd at a Cypress Hill concert in the video. You feel me? Mm. One of their big songs. I think it's like Insane in the Membrane or something like that. It's, he's in the insane. It's, it's, it's one of those records it's it's, it's well, an that's early the only one video where they got a crowd yeah I mean, it, it, he might be in that video because remember that's their second album they i've already... never heard vlad talk about that and yeah. i feel like he would have. he has talked about oh it. he has he has talked about really? it yeah 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 he's talked about it yeah yeah so like he he has qualifications and yeah. he was vlad that's why it's funny when people DJ, people like, like question vlad's like validity in hip-hop and it's like does duration not matter yeah. to you? Because yeah. he's got like 30 yeah, years of yeah. killing it but, under his belt yeah. before most hip hop fans who are who are critiquing them were fucking. Even, <laughs> most people who are criticizing them have been into rap for a couple of years. Who else would? Who else was mentioned in Drake's diss song? Because now I'm like a version to this oh. whole conversation, so you kind of okay. gotta dissect so, the whole song. So he's low key. Everybody killer right now. Like I Drake. figured that. And, and if you listen to the record, like there's two versions. The first one had the get money sample in it. You mm. feel me? And oh. th then he went over the what's beef. Now, I, I personally like would stay or there it was a reinterpolation of what's beef i would have stayed away from something diddy related as far as timing goes right. but regardless of that the, there's a dj who kid drop on it who kid, kid which oh, i took wow. which i took is him alluding to the fact that he's like 50 he yeah. feel like 50 and oh yeah. and oh two getting yeah. at everybody yeah. you feel me like, oh yeah. shit wait, yeah. wait i have an update this is literally posted on no jumper one hour ago Rick Ross calls 1090 Jake a rat and tells Drake to confess he had a nose reduction and a BBL. U B B L N word. And then, okay, I'm looking at. Uh, Not a white boy. I'm looking at. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. Hey, retraction. Rick You're Ross crazy. had time today. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. he put on his story, he, he posted uh, 1090 Jake's paperwork and wrote at 1090 Jake. A rat at Champagne Poppy. Then he posted more paperwork. Wrote at Ten Nine Jake rat emojis at Champagne Poppy. Go hashtag right. White Boy. Who's next? Hashtag BBL Drizzy. And then so he's gonna be able to go live tomorrow because every time I put a rat emoji, I'm banned for fucking ninety days. Really? Wait, seriously? What? I can't Bruh. say nothing on oh, my Instagram. He's I think definitely I'm just protected. like a terrorist Wait, labeled as a terrorist. Why a rat emoji? Because Bruh. anything gang like antagonistic in that way. Don't that's put why. the word crip. Yeah, oh, sure. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, like, I own the trademark. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold on. Let, let's listen to Rick Ross talk about 1090. Yeah. White boy, white boy, BBL Drizzy, I got a question. I saw you post that you got more money than Ricky Rose. And let's assume you did. Well, your best friend, Birdman, his house went in a foreclosure five years ago. You don't watch that man struggle them five years and then get that man a mansion. Because if you got more money than Rose, what's another 50 million, white boy? 
white boy. It's one for 40 on Indian Creek. It's one for 50 on Star Island. You got 48 hours, white boy. If you got Ricky Rose money, ain't none of my niggas winning foreclosure. Come on, white boy. I'm finna bust a bottle. White boy, don't do stunner like that. Come on, man. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna be real. That's the first time I've ever heard anybody suggest that Drake hasn't made Birdman enough money. Well, beyond that, here's the that that is so hypocritical because he literally has a whole diss track mm -hmm. against Birdman for not taking care of Wayne. Right. So yeah. now you're supposed to take and care of Robin Bird Callet. Yeah, and now yeah. you're supposed to take care of Birdman. Is Birdman what? broke? That's the first time I really heard this. That's I mean, crazy. Foreclosure. I mean, Jesus. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds. I, Sounds I weird. Know. I gotta Lawsuits. do the science, but there might it might have been a property. But everybody he been about. coming to get their money from him too recently. Yeah, mm -hmm. he been getting hit with some heavy joints. Mm -hmm. Wayne didn't yeah. Manny get him. Yeah, let me put a couple people yeah. got their bread back. You know Just this one. shit is really funny because I'm gonna tell you, I was like battling against nerds. It's like sitting in a class and you watching all the nerds put together their best science project <laughs> <laughs> to the class. Man, y'all can have that shit. I ain't with that shit, nigga. Your nose fake. Your stomach fake. You don't write raps. Your biggest homies in foreclosure. Come on, man. Go buy all them niggas that's living with each other a big mansion and put the, the, the BBL Drizzy logo on the gates. Man, feed them niggas, man. Come on, man. Do that shit, man. And y'all need to pray for Drake and tell him, park that old ass plane. It's a 1978 the cargo jet. People gave it to him free for promo. And I ain't hating, but be safe, my nigga. If something was to happen to you and I couldn't tell you this, be safe. And anybody getting on it, be safe, man. Wear your seat belts and make sure the oxygen things in there, because that shit was just for luggage. It wasn't for human beings. Okay. So we're critiquing people's private, private, jets. Air, <laughs> private airlines. Yo, it's but getting very like I, 1978. Like I remember reading an article about Drake's plane, and I'm pretty sure it's like state of the art. Yeah, that fool got a shit, stealth right? bomber, fool. From yeah. like man, a 78 jet. Man, Drake ain't putting his life in danger like <laughs> nah. that. He's making too much money. I can't. I don't know. I don't think he could talk money with uh. With Drake, Ricky. He is funny. Got, yeah, that's like, funny. Like he, he's it's funny. funny. But you that's that's an L in itself. No, nah, that was funny as fuck. But I don't really know if like okay, I feel like he's kind of taking a page from Cat Williams's book, which is like I can create reality because I've read that that like I've I've read expert uh plastic surgeons making TikTok saying Drake has not had anything done to his nose. You can look at the old photos. You can look at the current photos. My girl knows a shitload about rhinoplasty. So before I even saw fucking, she, my girl got one like when she was like 15. Yeah. She's looking at it like he did not have a nose job. His yeah. nose like it might look a little different in the fucking photo from 30 years ago and then versus today. You can gain weight. You lose it's, weight. Yeah, yeah. You get but older. Angles. And okay, BBL. The man had lipo and possibly like <laughs> ab shaping. He didn't have a BBL, which would have necessitated the fat being put in his ass. I feel like I've said this so many times because this is the same fucking argument we had about B, uh, Bam when Bam you, Kevo. When are you getting yours? I'm never going to do that. I don't want uh, my butt to be rounder or bigger. I'm not Although, talking about BBL. I'm talking about your lipo. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's for me. I don't, I'd rather lose weight. So stop complaining about looking fat. No, but that's that's the cheater's way. Uh, <laughs> I'm body. No, I'm going to go body body before, before I go BBL. Yeah, so, yeah, that's sure. the problem is that Drake got the fucking Lipo before they came out with Ozempic. Yeah. But yeah. Also, it's hard to be like buff when you're on Ozempic, so I don't know.